One of Africa's most bizarre natural disasters occurred on the 21st of August 1986, in a remote, mountainous region of northwest Cameroon. It's estimated that between 1,700 to 2,000 people lost their lives. When outsiders entered the area after the disaster, they found whole villages full of corpses and pastures full of dead cattle. People had seemingly died where they stood or slept. The bodies of men, women and children lay sprawled in the roads or dead in their beds. The bodies showed no signs of physical trauma, and to compound the mystery, this tragedy occurred in a remote rural area. There seems to have been no explosion, no volcanic eruption, and with no industry using toxic materials anywhere nearby, it seemed a mystery as to what could have caused such deadly devastation. The answer lay in one of the strangest natural disasters to have happened in modern times. Lake Neos is a crater lake in the northwest region of Cameroon, located about 315 kilometers northwest of Yaounde, the capital city. The lake is situated in the Oku volcanic plain, located high on the flanks of a mountain in the remnants of a volcanic crater. Seemingly benign in appearance, this blue freshwater lake surrounded by lush vegetation looks like the kind of place to spend a day fishing or swimming, and no one had any idea that this idyllic spot held a terrible secret. The reasons for the lake's deadly potential lies in the geology of the region. Deep beneath the lake itself is an active magma chamber, which for aeons has been slowly releasing carbon dioxide and other gases into the bedrock above. This gas had risen through the cracks in the ground and had made its way into the water at the bottom of the lake. Under normal conditions, the carbon dioxide gas would have dissipated harmlessly, bubbling up through the water. However, in the case of Lake Neos, the water is thermally stratified, with layers of warm, less dense water near the surface floating on the colder, denser water near the lake's bottom. Over long periods, the carbon dioxide gas seeping into the layer of water at the lake's bottom had dissolved into it in great amounts, like bubbles trapped inside a sealed bottle of fizzy drink. Now, there had been some warning of potential dangers. In August 1984, 37 people near the neighbouring lake Monum died suddenly from suffocation, but this incident appears to have been largely covered up by the government. Since there is no electricity or telephone service in the area, it wasn't very difficult to keep this incident secret, and the thousands of people who lived in the villages around Lake Neos carried on with their lives, unaware of the potential danger of their own lake. No one is sure what trigger caused the release of the gas. Likely explanations include an earth tremor, or possibly a landslide of rock and debris into the lake. We will never know the exact cause, but regardless, something caused a severe disturbance in the water, mixing the layers and forcing the release of the dissolved carbon dioxide gas. The effect of this was like opening a bottle of fizzy soda after having shaken it up. At 9.30pm on August the 21st, 1986, a loud rumbling noise was heard coming from the lake. A huge bubble of water and carbon dioxide gas rose up from the bottom of the lake, sending a column of spray 100 metres into the air and sending a 25 metre high wave across the surface of the lake. At the same time, an estimated 1.2 million cubic metres of gas was released into the atmosphere. This gas cloud, being composed of carbon dioxide which is heavier than air, began to sink down, forming a layer 50 metres thick, which then flowed over the crater lip, down into the valley towards the surrounding villages. The effects were instantaneous and devastating. As the cloud flowed out from the lake at an estimated speed of 40 kilometres per hour, it suffocated every living thing in its path. People cattle, wildlife, even insects were smothered. Nothing could escape the deadly cloud. There was nowhere to run. There was nowhere to hide. There was nothing anyone in the path of the cloud could do. The gas cloud passed through the villages of Nios, Cha, Cam and Subum, 
killing an estimated 1,700 to 2,000 men, women and children. Around 3,500 cattle, which is the main source of income for the villagers, were also killed. Incredibly, in the midst of all this death, there were one or two survivors. One of them described the moment that the disaster unfolded. I could not speak. I became unconscious. I could not open my mouth because then I smelled something terrible. I heard my daughter snoring in a terrible way, very abnormal. When crossing to my daughter's bed, I collapsed and fell. I was there till nine o'clock the next morning. A friend of mine came and knocked at my door. I was surprised to see that my trousers were red and had some stains like honey. I saw some starchy mess on my body. My arms had some wounds. I didn't really know how I got these wounds. I opened the door. I wanted to speak. My breath would not come out. My daughter was already dead. I went into my daughter's bed thinking that she was still sleeping. I slept until it was 4.30 in the afternoon. Then I managed to go over to my neighbours' houses. They were all dead. I decided to leave. I got on my motorcycle. As I rode through Neos, I didn't see any sign of any living thing. At a distance of 25 kilometres from the lake, the cloud began to dissipate, and some people were able to flee, although many suffering with symptoms of gas poisoning. Around 800 survivors were treated at the main hospital in Yaounde. It was believed that many of the victims had been poisoned by a mixture of gases that included hydrogen and sulphur, although later doctors concluded that death had occurred from carbon dioxide asphyxiation. The scale of the disaster made news around the world. Members of the international community came to Cameroon to study the lake, not only to understand what had happened, but also to try and ensure measures were put in place to prevent this from happening again. Several researchers proposed the installation of degassing columns suspended from rafts in the middle of the lake. The idea is to slowly vent the carbon dioxide by pumping up heavily saturated water from the bottom of the lake through a pipe until the release of gas inside the pipe naturally lifts the column of effervescing water, making the process self-sustaining. The first permanent degassing tube was installed in 2001. Two additional pipes were installed in 2011, and by 2019 it was determined that the degassing had reached an essentially steady state, and that a single one of the installed pipes would be able to self-sustain the process into the future. So for now, it appears that Lake Neos no longer poses the threat that it once did. On a final note, geologists also looked at other lakes in similar situations to Lake Neos to see if the same conditions existed in any other lakes nearby. They found that Lake Neos is one of only three known supersaturated lakes. The neighbouring Lake Monon is another one, and the other is Lake Kivu, a lake 2,000 times bigger than Lake Neos situated in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Estimates suggest a similar degassing event at Lake Kivu would give a death radius which would impact around 2 million people. A disaster on that scale doesn't even bear thinking about. It's often said that when we forget the past we are doomed to repeat it. Let us hope that in this case, the lessons from the tragedy of Lake Neos will be heeded.